So once you've done that, all you have to do is press the play button. It sounds like this. It's pretty much what side chaining is. It allows you to duck one volume in comparison with another source. That's quite good. So in Ableton, it's quite easy to do, and I will show you that. Anyway, let's get started. What we want to sidechain today is this big group right here, which is made up of sub, bass, leads, more leads, keys, and a freaking R. That is flux as, woo! We want to sidechain all of this to the kick and the snare. So when the kick comes in and the snare comes in, the bass and everything just ducks in volume, so it gives the kicks room, uh, so it gives the kick and the snares room to breathe and it just generally improves your mix. Your drums want to smash through, so we want to do that. First plugin, and it's the only plugin really, is you want a compressor. Glue compressor works fine, but uh, once you know it on this compressor, you can probably just translate those skills into the glue compressor. Cool, so we have a compressor, and it's doing absolutely nothing. Sweet. So we want that uh, triangle down arrow, which will bring up these uh, set of controls, and we're going to go ahead and activate the sidechain button. Still doing nothing. Cool. I need to calm down a bit. Audio input from the kick. Oh, we've got a little something coming up on the gain reduction, which is choice. And in order to uh, increase this compression, so to say, I want to drop this threshold down. Cool. And so you can visually see now that in the gain reduction, which is your GR, and the orange bar. That's the kick signal coming through, feeding through the compressor and making it duck in volume. But these settings aren't strong enough. You, you can stop here if you want, but like, we're gonna go to the extreme shot, what this really can do. Ratio, crank it, keep cranking it, keep cranking it, keep cranking it, infinity to one, boom, first step. Oh, this is gonna be the worst side chain tutorial ever. Attack, drop it all the way down. You want the side chain, you want the duck to come in as soon as you're like, your kick comes in. And then with your release knob, it's pretty much setting when you want the compressor to let go. So this can be determined how big your kick sample is. We could probably go figure this out. So I'd say the doof around here kind of leaves at... Oh, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here. Which is around the 60 milliseconds. So you can hear, especially in that part where the kicks are more prominent. You can hear the bass just ducking a bit, you know. It's like it's getting punched, and that stops it from talking for... These analogies are fucking fire. And now we want to apply those same things to the snare. Command D. Duplicate. And change this audio from into the snare. And I'm kind of comfortable with all these settings. The reason why you'd sidechain basses and kicks together is because they have contrasting frequencies. They have sharing frequencies. The kick drum's got this initial kind of sub hit, and then your bass is just playing sub all the time, so you don't want these two areas clashing. So with the snare, it kind of doesn't have that low-end doof, which we're trying to avoid, so I'm going to ease up on the compression a little bit by going infinity to one, and then just dropping the threshold maybe a bit. That's quite short. Don't, that's what she said me in the comments. So we're probably gonna look out for this bit here. And that probably goes on for 20, 30 milliseconds maybe. I'm happy, I'm happy with that. That sounds good. So that's literally all side chaining is. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why haven't I done this sooner? Oh my god. I was like that, I pretty much pooped myself when sidechaining came along, I was like, why aren't they sounding fat and bouncy, and then sidechaining, somebody showed me this on YouTube, I was like, holy shit, what have I been doing all these years? Sidechaining will improve your mixes so much, hopefully, all that's the thought. And so once we've got that, your bass is having a party. So just a slight recap, just remember your compression uh, settings from how you would normally compress. Threshold is how much, ratio is how hard, and attack and release is when. Hence why they're in milliseconds, time related. And so yeah, that's, that's, oh actually no 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 no, I have one more thing. Remember back in the day, UKF 2010, 2011, you had that narrow kind of bass and it's kind of doing that, but it's not loving, it's doing that in volume. Who else did it? Jim and I did it for a fair bit. 
And so that's easy enough to recreate as well. We're gonna go Command T and add a new audio channel. We'll just do this quickly so I can show you. And add that kick. And then set it to every every beat. So forward or bar, and we'll just keep dragging that out. And we'll rename this side. I can't spell. Once we've got the side chain and we've got it on all the beats forward or bar, we will mute this like so. Back into big group and we can probably get rid of no no no. I just want to get rid of one. And let's side let's change the input from kick to sidechain. So now it's gonna be ducking every beat. Oh that's so narrow right now. Let's just mute all this other biz so we get the bases. Yeah, okay, here we go. Oh, narrow! Woo! I just realized something, as I do at the end of every freaking tutorial, is realize something was slightly wrong. If you get your attack too quick, it's gonna do a kind of clicking sound. I should probably ease it up. Oh, that sounds so sick. Side chaining. It's got some pretty cool features. It's sick, and why wouldn't you be doing it? 